I'm your host, Locke, and this is the podcast where we drink, smoke, and bullshit about the life of a historic criminal. Now we're talking outlaws and gangsters. We're not going to cover too many serial killers. That's just a little bit dark for me, and this ain't no true crime podcast. But honestly, you can't call this a history podcast because I'm no historian. I'm just a history fan that does some research and bullshits about it with his friends. So speaking of my friends, let me introduce you to my co-host. First with us today, we got Tone. What up? And also with us, we got Tank. Hey everybody, how you doing? Um, it was like Jay's opening, pretty much. Like, something like that. that? <laughs> what the fuck? I'm sorry, Jay. <laughs> sorry, Jay Bone. Just stole his shit. <sighs> Hello, everyone. How you doing? He's very professional. He does do that. <laughs> so we already been at it for a while, so <laughs> breaking the fourth wall, this ain't our first podcast today, so this one might get a little off the rails. But we do have, since Tank's with us today, he's a big beer guy. So every time he's on the show, we go pretty beer heavy. And then he listens to the episodes and finds out every time he's not here, my wife's whipping up all these different drinks and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not fair. So we have my wife make us today. She made us these, the chocolate martinis that we had before. Bunch of rough and tumble guys about to talk about gangsters and sip on some chocolate martinis. Yep. Hey, I'll sip on this all day. Yeah. All I got to say is, ooh wee. That is some fucking, is uh, probably one of the, the best drinks I've had in a while. And on top of it, the balance, like she's got the liquor content down. Yeah. I mean. It's not strong. You know there's liquor there, but it's not strong. Yeah. Which is how I need my drinks. Like, I mean, I know some people are like, pour it hard and heavy and shit. No. But no. Yeah. I'm with that. It's like spicy food, you know. I mean, like, if I'm gonna drink some shit on the rocks, it. I'm gonna drink yeah. it on the rocks. But if I, if you're making a drink, it's there's got to be some balance to it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Or else just do fucking shots. That's yep. Like a goddamn animal. Yep. Right. All right, and we uh we got some brews too, but we'll get into that a little bit more as we move on. Uh, I gotta make sure before we get started, we gotta take the time to thank Six Fo Swaino letting us use his music in the intro and Cancer for letting us use his song Blood in the mid roll. And then you can follow him at Instagram at Eyes Bleed Defiance, where he's got a lot of his graphic art and photography. And you can see our logo there. He's the one that did our logo for us. So support uh, local artists, you know, go follow these guys. For sure. I enjoy his photography. He puts out, I mean, he's not on there every single day, obviously, on Instagram. But whenever I catch his uh, posts, they're usually pretty uh, quality. So definitely check him out. Yeah, and uh, they both got really good uh, talented music there. Yeah. But for real, like all the music is good. Like, yeah, like six four Swaino, like, like yeah. I be singing that shit well, out of nowhere now. Cause people smell that dope when you pass yeah. by. Yeah. <laughs> <That's why. laughs> is this my theme song? Yeah. I've always said when I walk out the door in the morning, my theme music that I hear in my head when I step on my porch is mm-hmm. "Ghetto Boys." Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Hell yeah. <laughs> Except it's Office Space style. <laughs> yeah. That was my theme music before Office Space stole them <laughs> straight. <laughs> Fuck that. They can't claim that from me. Shit, they don't get that. Oh, I get it. You made a funny movie. I was. I've been digging that shit. Nah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I remember you bumping out of that little blue car you used to have. <laughs> Delivering pizzas. The, the Delivering pizzas, bumping damn it feels good to be a gangster. Smoking a bowl in one hand. <laughs> Driving a stick shift, taking bong grips. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that was great, There's got to be an easier way to do that. <laughs> And that's how we got here today. I mean, you know, and that brings us to now. It's, it's, it's a fucking badge of pride, in my opinion, man. You can do you know, stick shifts. It's like a theft deterrent now, let alone right. a, a option on a vehicle. So if you can three task, is that even a word? If you can triple task like that, damn, it does feel good to be a gangster. Shifting with your elbow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you knew which RPM to have it at, so you didn't even have to hit the clutch, too. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. And the bad guy we're covering today is Rachel Wall. This ain't negotiation time. This is Scarface, final scene, fucking bazookas under each arm. Say hello to my little friend. Hmm. And this is a female Rachel? Yes. We'll find out. All right. I don't think yes. I've ever heard of a male Rachel, but I mean, hey. On this podcast, we've learned you always got to ask. Yes. Because <laughs> you never know. Rachel Wall was born Rachel Smith in 1760 on a farm in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Okay, 1760. This is pre-revolution. Yes. So this is some old shit. 
like some swashbuckling. And I'm sorry, where where did you say she was born again? Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Okay, all right. So not swashbuckling in the fucking Pennsylvania. We might get swashbuckling. All right. <laughs> Just might. I just wanted to say swashbuckling <laughs> again. We might not go back to the 1700s for a while. So right. let's let's use swashbuckling while we can. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta knock the rust off a term sometimes. So this is the oldest person we've covered so far. So this whole episode kind of follows under the under the legend has it section. I did the best I can, but I'm going to tell you the best version of the story. Uh, we want the swashbuckling version of the story, Locke. <laughs> Give me Hobbs and Shaw. Her parents were devout Presbyterians. And now she despised farm life, and she loved any time she spent on the waterfront. Okay. I don't think that's unique. I believe in 1760, everybody hated farm life. And right. even more probably when escape from farm wasn't as easy as hopping in your tin Lizzie and fucking cranking the engine over and driving to the beach for a, you know, a weekend, you know what I mean? Right. So I could see how if you were born on the farm or in the mountains or the farm mountains and the water, it was like a, a whole other world, you know, the, the beachfront was a whole other world to you. She was described as fair skin with long brown hair and blue eyes. <laughs> At 16 years old, she traveled with her mom to Harrisburg, the Pennsylvania capital, for her grandfather's funeral. And then while she was in Harrisburg, she was able to go to the docks a lot. Ah, shitty, man. I'm sorry. What year was that again? Uh, she's 16, so that would be 17, 1776. Oh. 1776? That's like the revolution or that's something, That's it, right? man. That's the time, man. It was crazy. It's yeah. like, like, we're in the fucking middle of the revolution, and, well, we're just, I mean, I know it's a funeral, but, well, we're just gonna go for a fucking, you know, I just can't even fathom that. A, a war in your country, and you're just fucking bystanding and living your life like it's a normal fucking thing and shit. I get to go to the docks. I mean, to, to be fair, we're talking about, like... Load up the musket and fucking the single shot cannonball war, but still, man, it just seems weird that like any you know young female, let alone somebody who'd never been you know doesn't like being at the farm and shit, and she's traveling during the fucking war. <laughs> Maybe it was exciting. You know? yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're here for, bro. <laughs> if you don't have anything to say, we'll get through this real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I could just you technically don't have to show up. I'll just read these bullet points. <laughs> it was funny too because I said that only so I could take a drink of my fucking <laughs> chocolate fucking <Yeah>. wonder here <laughs> and <laughs> pretend like it was to keep the show moving. <laughs> he didn't want you to do say shit. He could just do a whole episode with just me. Right. <laughs> It'll be a whole ten minutes. You're like the you're a podcast hype man. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Shit. Titties. That sucks, man. Yeah. And last Hope she's episode. Hot. Hope she's hot. <laughs> One day when she was at the dock, she was attacked by a group of girls. A man named George Wall came to her aid. The two fell in love, and despite her mom's objections, the two eloped and moved to Boston. So I'm just going to read in between the lines a little bit. He was probably a slightly rough dude. Maybe he was too old for it. Maybe the mom just had some kind of uh, mother's intuition that this guy probably wasn't going to be good for, for Rachel. She's probably right. One thing that's good, it doesn't seem... seemed like he might have been older, but he wasn't like older, older. So it wasn't creepy like that. So probably more just a bad guy than a... Okay. Old guy creeping, and we which know, always makes the story worse. You know? Back in those days, it like creeping was like common. What we would consider creeping nowadays, back then, was like all right. Well, I mean, yeah, sixteen years old. That's almost you're you're yeah, getting, getting damn near spinster. spinster. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you unmarriable? What the yeah. fuck's going on, bro? God damn it! You have sixteen and you ain't had four kids yet. Right. <laughs> we need workers on this farm. In Boston, she took a job as a house servant, and he worked on a fishing boat. So he'd be gone at periods of time. It seems like he probably wasn't a good dude when he was back. He would uh, work as like a petty thief. Like there's a record of her trying to break him out of prison with a file at one point. Okay. So he was kind of in and out of prison guy. She worked as a servant. He worked as a fisherman, <laughs> which is a much better gig because he just gets to leave and yeah. go fishing. Yeah, yeah. You're just somebody's servant in their house. <laughs> and then you sure. got to go fucking file them out of prison and shit, too. Like, man, you've been sitting around the fucking house all day fucking being a servant. I've been out fucking doing what I want. Hey, I got caught up in some shit. Come file me out, man. Right. How long does it take to file someone out of prison? Like, how thick were these bars? I feel like forever. 17. Yeah, like, damn. We're talking about 1780s fucking file, too. You know what I mean? Right. Maybe probably... her plan was to go file it a little every day. Right, right. I was <laughs> going to say, when she come back, like, yeah. every day? 
like, every every visit and shit, just a little like bit. A little fun. What is that, Andy uh, Dufresne, Dufresne, whatever, just fucking carving rock out of the wall? <laughs> so Rachel Dufresne, she's gonna slow. She's gonna get her man out. She got him out sure. after two years. And I mean, you know, in the same token, your your files are probably shit back in them ages. Your your jail cells are probably shit too. So what's worse is there's never there's never record of him doing time more than six months. Mm. So. <laughs> <laughs> she gonna go break him out of a two month stint? Yeah. Like maybe George just needs to sit there for a minute yeah. and get his shit together. Yeah, right. I can't like, handle it in here, babe. <laughs> I won't be back till August. Like you know what? I got you. You're out of here. My booty hoe is getting pretty sore. <laughs> Please get me out. Please. Everything I liked about you, they like about me. <laughs> So one day after returning home from a fishing trip, George spends all his time with a group of friends, five dudes that he met fishing. They get back to land and they spend their whole time back just drinking and partying. So by the time they're done partying, they realize they drank all their money away and the schooner they have fished on left without them. Oh, wow. That was partying. Sound like my 20s. Like, dude, what? We lost our job, dude. (laughs) No, literally, we lost it. It's not here. It, it <laughs> went away. That giant boat. We, he said a fucking schooner and shit, which I'm sure I, schooner's got a couple masts, some sails. And like this giant boat just bust up out of town, and you you're so hammered that you, you even fucking jump on it. And shit. So that's a schooner. <laughs> yep. You don't, you don't just pull that out like a car and shit. That takes a minute to get going. Yeah, that's like a pirate boat. So now they're just sitting there, no money and no job. So George suggests he try their hand at piracy. Now they're all good yeah. sailors because they're fishermen. And a handful of them had worked as privateers at one point anyways. So you guys know what privateers are? Yeah, it was like not a pirate, but like a like a sailor for hire kind of a deal, right? But they usually had their own boats, right? It was basically pirating that was like government subsidized or illegal. Okay, so like a Black Rock uh, situation or something? Yeah. I know that's getting ultra modern on it, but kind of like that, like a government contract. Is it Black Rock? Contract. It's Black uh... Black water. Black water. Black water. Yeah, yeah. the the government defense contract. When you said that, you said Black Rock, and I'm like, yeah, that's where you can go cook your own steak. You get yeah. a steak and you cook it on the hot that rock. That mutual fund, shit. Black Rock and shit. See, I didn't even think of a mutual fund. I thought of the steakhouse. Yeah, well, when so. you said that, and I thought mutual fund, then you said steakhouse. I was like, well, there's another one I fucking yeah. mixed it up with. It's definitely like a Black Water of pirates. Like, you're allowed to do this shit because you're sanctioned by this government to protect their... Yeah. Like, look, man, we're short a schooner. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need a couple of schooners. Yeah, and they'd already worked as privateers, some of them, so they're like, fuck it, let's be pirates. And George talks Rachel into going with them to be a pirate. All right, man. I love fucking pirate shit, dude. I don't know why, but just hopping on a sh- And I know... Most pirate activities is not like they're on like the open seas all the time. They're mostly hanging around, you know, tobacco islands. And, but still, just something is just 100% gangster about hopping on this fucking boat. You ain't got barely any fresh fucking water. And you're like, you know what? We've got one shot. We got to fucking sail for fucking four months. We got to meet up with the Spanish Armada. We got to rob their shit and come back. And if we don't, we're all going to die of scurvy and shit. Mm-hmm. Because we don't got enough water to make it there and back. We got to rob their water supply or whatever. And their gold. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that shit just, that's some cool shit. I mean, probably wasn't cool to be that person. You know, with what? scurvy and like your, you know, shitty, like I cut my leg and now it's got to get chopped off shit. I mean, is it worse than your job as a servant back in Boston? I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean? What the fuck are we doing? Yeah. Well, no, for her, I mean, we already know at the beginning she was she was pumped up about getting away from the farm, getting that city action, that waterfront excitement. In hindsight, at one point, Rachel Wall will say the day that George talked her into going to be a pirate. Like, that's the day that everything Kind of went downhill. Okay. Like, Here I am 250 years later. Like, this shit was probably cool. It was probably exciting <laughs> for us. Like, yeah, no, motherfucker. They borrowed a small but fast schooner, which I'm assuming meant they just found one and took one. <laughs> <That's> the... <laughs> borrowed. Yeah. Well, they would have just we'll went bring it that back. from the beginning. <laughs> it's just like the <laughs> you imagine this dude? He's the smoothest dude of fucking 17, fucking the late 1700s. Like, he talks his wife into being a pirate, and then he talks some dude who owns a schooner back in them fucking times. It's probably like owning a fucking yacht now, you know what I mean? Into goddamn borrowing his, <laughs> his fucking schooner and shit. Like, what do you got, like a good business plan or something? No, we are going to go try being pirates. Pirates, baby. <laughs> you got a three-mast ship, and that needs to be fast, so pirate shit. They rigged the boat up so it could easily convert from seaworthy to unsailable. 
And what they would do is they'd sail around on the outside of storms. And then once the storms would go away, they'd break down their ship so it looked like it got fucked up in the storm. And then the crew would go hide <clears throat> under the deck, and Rachel would stay up top on the boat mm. and call for help. Wow. Diabolical. Diabolical. And you remember back in the day, uh, somebody flashes your lights at you, yeah. don't flash them back, or... Think twice about stopping for somebody on the side of the road because it might be a decoy. It's like, well, you know, that shit is learned behavior, man. Somebody read a fucking uh, swashbuckling pirate story back in the day and said, you know what? I'm stealing that shit and modernizing it. I mean, it's kind of a sl- slick plan. When you said it, I was like, wow, that's that's forward thinking shit right there. You guys have seen Mad Max Fury Road? Yeah. There's a scene in, Ma- in Fury Road. In the apocalypse, there's a hot naked lady in a cage sitting there asking for help. <laughs> Mad Max pulls up and he looks at it and he says, that's bait. Yeah. Yeah. But it's easy for us to say that in 2020, <laughs> oh, <laughs> looking man. back. Well, some of these guys probably ain't even the best of dudes either. Just some sailors out there fucking see some chick on a boca down ships by themselves. Like, hey. Hey, what's up? Pull up. <laughs> what <laughs> up? <laughs> we've, re- we've, I don't want to assume here, but we've seen some of the talent at some of the lower end gentlemen's clubs, possibly. Mm-hmm. I was a cable guy and I had to go into some gentlemen's clubs during the afternoon. And apparently, the B team. Yeah, that's not the A squad, right? <laughs> so imagine a straight up pirate hooker <laughs> and what she looked like back then. You know what I mean? And then you got fair haired, brunette, blue eyes, you know, Rachel here and yeah. like Thumper and Bambi and shit. Their legs just start tapping the wood. I believe they call that Twitter painted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a okay. siren. It's like literally like yeah. that story right there. She's like a siren. They're like, no, man, just turn the fucking wheel. And he's like, I'm the fucking captain here, all right? Does your badge say uh, number one privateer on it? No, mine does. We're going <laughs> towards that brunette. So after the storms, they would hide below deck. And when boats would come up and tie off, all the guys would come up from under the deck and kill the other crew. They would typically take the guys, tie them up, put weights on them, and throw them overboard. Oh, and then sucks. sink the ship. Okay. Because you, well, you keep your... You keep your secret that way. How can they get back to, to shore that there's somebody out there pulling the old switcheroo? Right, there's no radios. Right yeah. There. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, right. I get, yeah, no, don't get me wrong, man. Drowning. Shoot well, no, they kill, head, they but... kill them. They didn't drown them like that. They would oh. kill them. <laughs> they would still kill them, Either but way, then they still... didn't want the bodies. You know, yeah. They wanted the bodies to go away. Yep. So that's what they were doing was they, they'd weigh down the bodies, throw them overboard, and then sink the ship. If they couldn't sink the ship... They'd break it up. Like, they'd break the masks. Or okay. break the masks. <laughs> like, and, these are just props for our next gig, you know what I mean? Like, take well, they make it look like it was lost at storm. Whenever they ran into bigger boats where they thought it'd be a bigger crew, Rachel would lure the captain and the first mate below deck where they would kill them and then attack the crew with no leaders. Right. And Man, they had a couple angles figured out there. When they said they would lure them under there under the guise of looking at the boat damage... Okay. I don't, I don't know. I think she would lure him under there on how you would lure any two guys at sea. That's what they were calling it back then. Yeah. Boat damage. Yeah, come look at the boat damage. Come look at these tetes. <laughs> and, I mean, chivalry, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't think it's ever going to die. Like, there's always going to be dudes who will try to help out a lady no matter what. You know, I mean, just people helping out people. But anyways, like... Like, guys literally think, like, if I help out this chick, like... I'm going to get laid. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) So, I mean, like, I get it. Like, back then, it was... And plus, like I said, I mean, your average pirate hooker compared to, you know... And I I don't know what she looks like. We don't know what she looks like. But in my own brain, I'm I'm figuring that she's, you know, hotter than average. To me, she looks like Jennifer Aniston. Yep. <clears throat> well, ultimately, at the end of the day, we don't have no pictures. We don't even have like a real drawing of it. Right. Wait, oh, till, okay. wait till you see we got the drawing. This is um, what still right. around 1760 or like uh, 1770, 80. They dominated most of their pirating from the years of 1781 to 1782. Okay. Oh, okay. So two years. Okay. They're out of sea. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a real quick smoke break, refill our drinks, and we'll be back in a minute. Yeah, my words I 
around the corner, craps in the cross streets. We puffin' on the smoke of genocide, and we all chief. More solid than Nostradamus, his ominous forecast. I'm spitting in all caps, you listen in all facts. I'm talking about airstrikes, ranks, mines, missiles, tanks, kids and bandanas and masks, waving pistols and racks. We'll overthrow the government one day. Matter of fact, grab a gun, we'll see you next Sunday. I'm the antithesis of conformity, I can weather the storm. Storm like the beach of Normandy, I'ma ring the alarm. So this is the intro to our Snoop album. <laughs> We're back. Push is a whistle. We're like, why are you going to take a smoke break? Did you smoke after the break? <laughs> oh, somebody fixed my mic, too. I didn't even realize that. Thank you. You're uh, welcome. We didn't to be fucking... honest, we smoked throughout the whole podcast. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, what's this beer you're drinking? Did you guys already just talk about that when you opened no, it? No, we didn't. Uh, this is pretty good. It's uh, Go ahead. Uh, Centennial IPA from uh, Founders. Founders is a great brewery. They got... A complex in Grand Rapids, Michigan, pretty big city in Michigan, and they got a uh, spot in Detroit too. Um, but anyway, Centennial IPA, 7.2, so it's a heavy hitter, 65 IBUs, which I've never really been able to uh, put that scale to use. I mean, I've had brews that said that they were low on the IBU scale and still tasted bitter. So, anyways. Um, so, I mean, what's considered low as IBU? I don't know. I know IPAs are usually high in the 60s and up area, but the lower on the scale you go, you get into lagers, um, sweeter brews and stuff like that that's more on the sweet side than okay. the malty side than the hoppy side. It's balanced IPA. Um, it's more on your traditional IPA style. It's not a, a hazy, and uh, it's clean little bit more on the hoppiness and bitter side and the aftertaste than the hazy little thing ipa we had but anyways um good beer i would definitely drink it again especially for 219 for a, a 20 ounce can that's a solid yeah, price i mean it's got that red look to it too yep amberish and it's it's got a it doesn't say it's a hazy so it doesn't pretend like it is and i'm not but that's what i compare a lot of ipas to but it's it's more of a traditional ipa so anybody listening to the podcast where I talked about not being able to get the Old Nations M43 tart strawberry, somebody told me it was in stock and then immediately sent me a picture and said it was out of stock. <laughs> um, but Tank brought one. Nice. So I got the M. A cool thing about Old Nation while he takes a sip and is uh, they have a limited run of collector's edition cups or whatnot that they make when they do this tart strawberry and it's always cool designs and uh i this last year they did a run and they donated a bunch of the money to charity so i thought that was pretty cool of them yeah just as i drank it and it's, it's good it's a great beer i'm super disappointed as i just look and i was supposed to roll it oh and yeah i didn't do it or pour it i didn't do either i got a fucking cup i set it next to a cup that i didn't pour it in <laughs> Pour it in there. And so there's a there's yeah. instructions on this on this beer. We make a lot of jokes about you know white collar beers and fancy beers and shit, but Old Nation's one of those ones where they're really into their craft and they give you a little instruction label on the side because apparently sediment uh, ha happens in the can. So he's talking about like the little instruction label on the side on how you can avoid the sediment. And there's like three different techniques that they give you. So if you if you're wondering if these guys are serious. They are, and if you've ever seen their brews in a place, I highly recommend them. Some listener with a beard was just like, Psh, didn't even roll that. Twenty-three. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't deserve that limited edition beard. And now he doesn't listen no more. So he's already pissed. And he poured he... it. He poured it. Okay, yeah. he's cool. And it is more delicious. He did They're one right. of the other instructions. <laughs> They're right. Pour it into a fuck. Up. Pour it into a fat tire glass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so when we left off, they were full-fledged pirating. Their their gig was robbing people on the outside of storms. Uh, most of the bodies, they'd weigh down and throw to the bottom of the water. So it was a period of 1971 to 7082. They were attributed to the destruction of 12 boats, the death of at least 24 sailors, and the theft of over $6,000 in gold and jewels. Hmm. Okay. But they never really will know the total because they sank their boats and the people. 
Mm-hmm. So it's really tough to say. I right. never know. It all ended one day when George underestimated the size of a storm, and he just really got close, and their boat got capsized, and the crew got washed off to sea. Okay, damn. Hopefully they were able to take some of their bounty, their booty, back <laughs> to sh- fucking shore or something, because if not, that's a hell of a risk. Let's just rob all these motherfuckers on the outside of the storm. What's your contingency plans if we get caught in a storm? Well, shit's going to sink. <laughs> I guess we just die in a storm like yeah, we so, pretended. So, like, fucking right time. where we started and shit? <laughs> damn straight. Pirates. George and most of the crew were washed off to sea and never seen again, presumed dead. Rachel and a couple crew members were picked up by a boat and brought back to land, where she returned to Boston. And she went back to her job working as a servant. Most of her time working as a servant, obviously, it's a bum job when you was just Rachel the pirate of the of the East Coast. And I mean, sure. without well, her, there was no operation, right? I hope she's looting as a servant. <laughs> Well, she would still loot down to the docks. So she would sneak to the mm. docks where she'd break into captain's quarters of boats okay. and rob the captain's quarters. So there were stories of her stealing while captains are still in the quarters. What I do know is over the next couple of years, she spent a lot of time in and out of prison several times for charges, including theft, accessory to robbery, and once she was sentenced to 15 lashes. Oh, Here's a picture that they have of Rachel Wall getting lashes. Hmm. Which to me that uh, looks like some fucking like, it looks like some 1700s kink porn. Yeah, that's shit. that's what I was gonna say. It's like hardcore porn back yeah. then and shit. What's up with this dude in the background? It's just what is his purpose and shit? Is it like why did they have to write him into the picture? He's just <laughs> in the back fucking staring in and shit. I don't know. They made her uh, little cartoon counterparts look kind of hot. But... <laughs> <laughs> they did. That's a good. That's a that's a fucking smoking hot <laughs> avatar. <laughs> What's your job today? Go supervise the two hot chicks. One of them's getting the lashes, the other one's giving them. She won't give her the lashes if we don't creepily watch in from this back room. And like you said, that's not a picture. Somebody had to take the time to draw that motherfucker yeah. in the doorway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, uh, I'm trying to draw this picture. No, it's cool. I'm just going to watch. Okay. But uh, get the fuck out of the pic. No, man. Well, I'm going to draw you into the picture then because that's the only way I know how. Looks like Gollum. He does. He's kind of back there all fucking weird. Well, I mean, he's what? He's creeping. He's creeping on the fucking topless lash in. Of course it's Gollum. Who else I know, would it he, be? He, he looks like he's doing a thriller slide and shit. He's about to kick into the thriller slide. Uh, a creepy ass Gollum at the Rachel Wall lash. Boom, 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 boom. He's like, he's over there jacking off. He's like, yeah, whipper. Lash her some more. It was only 14. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> on March 18th, 1789, she was accused of attacking a wealthy 17-year-old on the street, stealing her bonnet and attempting to cut out her tongue. Damn. <laughs> like how the times have changed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's, And we've, we've covered it through episodes, like different forms of disrespect. Like she stole my bonnet. Can you believe that shit? I mean, don't get me wrong. She did. Would you just try to cut out her fucking tongue and shit too? Yeah, they say that. That's kind of a weird situation. Like the details. It is 1700s information. But, but... that was kind of a ba- that was a swashbuckling ass thing though <laughs> yeah. back in the day, right? Like fucking cut out to somebody's tongue and shit. Uh, yeah, I'll pull. I'll pull your fucking tongue out, yeah. bitch. Take this bonnet. That was like seven coppers <laughs> <laughs> for that bonnet. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Even the even the person whipping her in this photo is wearing a bonnet. It looks like I mean some kind of like weird looking bonnet. Well, that's just, probably a shitty bonnet. Yeah. This is probably a dope bonnet. You're right. She said seventeen hundred or seventeen year old uh, wealthy, um, wealthy, wealthy seventeen year old. Yeah. She she probably rolled up and was like, "Give me your bonnet. I used to rob people on the fucking high seas. Just give me that shit." And then they gave her some slack, and she was like, "All right, I'll cut your fucking tongue out then." I'm gonna cut your tongue off and lick my ass with it. I got I got lashed while. This- <laughs> guy fucking watched me i ain't scared of you <laughs> what's crazy is that's kind of my best interpretation of the situation is it seems like is she kind of was trying to just steal it or whatever and the chick was giving her some guff and she didn't have a weapon she's not a pirate anymore but she was still like how about i rip out your fucking tongue right. give me the goddamn hat rich girl and you said seven coppers i mean i bet at that time i mean i'm not we covered it before on an older episode when we were talking about somebody holding the tailor position and how maybe that would be laughed at now but back then that was needed i mean maybe yeah. maybe back in the day a chick only had her bonnet and one bonnet it's not like she was holding extra bonnets at home to to yeah. change into so maybe that was a bit like, hey give me your bonnet i'll get i'll get uh, 12 coppers for it right now down the street you know so i can see it now you know like why she'd want her bonnet 
Other witnesses argue that it was an altercation and that her bonnet got knocked off in the altercation and they basically got in a fight. But none of those witnesses came to court. So who knows? Maybe she snatched the bonnet off her head, tried to rip her tongue out. Maybe they just got in a fight. But either way, the 17 year old was rich. So they're like, hey, right. catch so this girl. She didn't rip her actual tongue out. She no. tr- she attempted to, right? They accused her of it. Accused yes. her. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, she could have did anything. She could have bumped into her and knocked her bonnet off. And like, oh, yeah, she tried to rip my tongue out or yeah. she stole my bonnet. When the girl asked to identify her, she said, yeah, I think that's her. Mm. Ah. Her case was brought to the Supreme Court on August 25th, 1789. She actually got a couple pretty good lawyers that put up a good defense. So, like, a lot of times you think, like, oh, they get railroaded. She actually had some pretty good lawyers. And the lawyers said that when they caught Rachel Wall, they didn't have the bonnet. So they said, well, even so, the worst you can charge her with is attempted robbery. You know what I mean? Like, that's really kind of all we got. Okay. But the fact that she had an extensive record, you know, she's trying to say, like, no, I wouldn't steal her bonnet. And they're looking at their, you know, her rap sheet. I mean, so, some tales are as old as time, right? Yeah. We could, we could still tell that story in 2020. Like, yeah. I don't know. It looks like you seem like a pretty guilty fellow. Right. You know, I feel like this checks out. So all these times you're in prison, and now this time you weren't committing a crime? Nah, sorry. Plus, she's rich. So, I mean, you know, back then that, that held some, uh, you know, just like it does now. I mean, you know, the rich can tend to just, in that situation, make up the reality. Well, and they had witnesses, they had nine witnesses that were willing to testify. Oh, okay. There was a lot of witnesses that wouldn't testify. Who knows? Now, the worst part was, once they convicted her of robbery, the fact that the crime occurred on the street made it highway robbery. And at that time, highway robbery was a capital offense. Highway robbery is like, it's land pirating. Pirates on land are highwaymen. Right. And at that time, that was a big deal. Because what else are you going to do is you're going to move shit on wagon trains. Right, so they're just waiting on the road, waiting, yeah. you know, in a bush or behind some big-ass rock or some shit, waiting for someone to pass by, take their goods. Yeah. That goes to this time, but this goes that goes back to, like, fucking Robin Hood and right. shit, robbing people on roads. Yeah, know? even back then, you're like, four roads. You got the Silk Road, this, this road, and that road. Like, have fun traveling on it. On October 8th, she was hung at the gallows with two other men. Now this is like a this is a drawing of her hanging with two other guys. Oh, <laughs> Stick figures. I mean, uh, just hang a man? little bit above that. Yeah, that's where they got hangman from. Holy <laughs> shit! So yeah, you start doing some research on Rachel Wall, and you'll run across this picture of her being hung. That was uh, he's an artist. What's the technical term for the person who draws in the court? And it's not the oh. stenographer, but so anyways, like this shows you what it was like back then because they're like well we need somebody that's going to be able to witness this hanging and is going to be able to draw a picture of it and this person's like hey my little brother could draw (laughs) (laughs) and then you end up with this and shit it's like the wheels from every car when you were a kid like the wheels are super small but the car is huge and shit and there's literally like I don't know they got antlers on. What the fuck are those people wearing on their heads and shit? Like what are what are those things that are sticking out of their heads? I don't know. Maybe they're bunnies. <laughs> See, this and... is this is what nepotism gets you. Like when you hire yeah. from. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Let's go get the best and the brightest and do some open interviews. Like nah, my cousin can do it. Yeah, you know, like Bam. that shit. Like sticking in a court nowadays. They're like, well, do you have a close up 1080p version of the person who stole your newspaper off your front porch? No, I don't, sir. Case closed. Back then, they're like, well, clearly in this picture we can see here that Rachel was hanging from the gallows and shit, and that was Jimmy, little Jimmy, and big Jimmy on the uh, left hand side, and over there was all the people from right, the other. Right. Yeah. I mean, the only huh. the only way you can tell that's Rachel is because they drew a dress, yeah. kind of. Who do you think we should cover in the next episode? This guy. Yeah, yeah. That guy. The guy on the right. Let's cover the guy on the right. The guy with the short antlers. Or how about the guy holding a yeah. look like a stick? It should be easy to figure out. Look, look at that detail. <laughs> Rachel Wall was the last woman hung in the state of Massachusetts and is considered New England's only female pirate. Oh, wow. Really? Oh, you said hung. Okay, so not like the last capital punishment you know, receiver, but the last person who was hung. Right. Yeah, we don't do that no more. We do lethal injection. We kill them nicely. Six years after her death, highway robbery was removed as a capital offense.
Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and nice. that, it, when you mentioned that, uh, I was like, all right, you know we were scraping the bottom of the barrel back then for new fucking shit to charge people with. They're like, so rob- robbery? <laughs> Not a capital offense. Highway robber? Oh, we can get him for that one. Yeah. Oh, that's a capital offense for the next three years. Die. Like, we- wait, but I just robbed somebody. But it was on a highway. You're fucking dead now. Stealing a bonnet on a street. That's what yeah. they had in mind when they came up with the highway <laughs> robbery. <laughs> like, oh, oh, that was a- the... That's what they considered a highway ro- robbery. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. when she stole when the she bonnet? stole her bonnet, <laughs> it was on a street. So oh, she my. robbed her in a street. Yep. Hell which, nah. Bring out the wagon and hang him in the street. What'd she do? She stole some uh, material that somebody had wrapped around her head and shit. Hang him. Hang him. Well, she really messed up. She fucked with a rich person. She was fucking yeah. with like fucking sailors and captains. And, yeah, because uh, that's rig- that's one thing we don't know is whose who's child that was, right? Yeah. Yep, I'm with you there. Robbed the wrong motherfucker that day. All right, so that's the story of Rachel Wall. So say goodnight to the bad guy. Go on. The last time you're going to see a bad guy like this again, let me tell you. Now, you guys haven't seen a picture. We don't have no pictures. But if we were going to cast a Rachel Wall movie, who do you think you would pick to play her? The movie that keeps on coming to my mind, it was called The Illusionist. It had Edward Norton in it. Oh, God, what is her name? Brunette-haired lady from the Seventh Heaven TV show. Jessica Biel? Yeah, and I don't know if she... She doesn't have blue eyes i don't think i don't know why i know that we got contacts for that yeah (laughs) but anyways that's who i'm that's who i'm thinking of only and and only because of the illusionist the illusionist was set and it wasn't even set back then it was set in like the early 1900s or whatever so it wasn't even set back then but i'm picturing her in the dress that she wore in the illusionist which is my wife's favorite movie shout out shout out to sea butts yep i'm gonna go with Liv tyler Liv tyler okay that's it right brunette and blue eyes yeah that's the package. Or so. Supposedly natural. No. I was thinking Scarlett Johansson because she could steal it. Any girl could be could... Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Me, I don't know. Well, I mean, look, they want the story wants me to see think she's pretty. Right. She's got blue eyes. Yeah. You know, we could dye her hair brown. Right. Yeah, sure. So. I didn't yeah. say Scarlett because Crystal knows I got a thing for her. Uh, well, I mean, I'm technically. Good. Every guy has a thing for Scarlet. Yeah, like, I don't know who like does it. Oh. Don't know. Yeah, don't well, fuck yeah. It's, it's called genetics. It's, it's called it's called nature. She just of course. Ooh, I mean, ooh, you rebel. You're bah. so unique. <laughs> well, and it's cool because then they put her in like tight black leather and taught her to fight. Like, oh, yeah. Cool. Okay, let's now she's black yeah, little. Let's make her okay, hotter. Yeah. Don't you dare give her a welder, goddammit. <laughs> yeah, I think we can go with all those. And like I said, the good good thing about this is there's no picture. Well, we have to. We got nice, these dope man. pictures. Nice man. This was. I, I love this episode. No. <laughs> well, I mean, you're making a joke, but at some point I was doing historical records, and these are the pictures I showed you. I, I have the half a porn picture with the guy in the door. <laughs> Gollum jacking off in the corner. And then I, mean, I got the I got the stick figures of a hanging. I mean, and those are the pictures like, I got of Rachel Wall. What this looks like, and that picture looks like when you and your boys used to play hangman, but somebody was like, "No, nah, I'm making the gallows pretty sweet instead of that little T-frame shit. We're making some wheels and shit, and there's gonna be some bystanders. Yeah, let me add some shading. Why, yeah, why did you make a rolling gallow? Nobody's guessed that it, uh, this says swashbuckler on it yet. We're playing fucking hangman. Is this like a the Wild Wild West era or shit like that? Not even. No. This, so this is like before, the early... Uh, before or after? Yeah, so this is like East Coast, like muskets and people dressed like Quakers and stuff. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah you said the Revolution War. Actually, yeah, like so 1700. Like, so like The British yep. are coming type of shit, right? Yeah, this is after like that. Big boots and long dresses. Yep. And wigs. Yeah, wigs and George shit. George Washington wigs and shit. Yes, sir. Yep, we're cutting you open and but, bleeding the blood out of you to fucking cure your disease and shit. We're still in that time frame. Drink some whiskey, put a leech on it. I don't mm, know. Let's yep. try. We got to get this blood. We were really infatuated with getting blood out of stuff. Yeah. So this is the oldest one we did, but you know what? Pirate, Good pirate stories are hard to find, and good female bad guys are hard to find. I could tell a half a hard-to-research story. Yeah. But, you know? I mean, what I liked about this one is... The other pirate that we covered was Albert Hicks, and yep. he wasn't your typical pirate. So right. same thing with her. We have a mindset. When we think of pirates, we think of a guy pirates with a peg leg yeah, and they're out on the sea robbing other boats or whatever. But 
There's all kinds of different ways to do it. Technically, any crime at sea was pirating. Right. Yeah. I mean, they, they're still pirates to this day, right? Like out in the fucking West Indies and shit. Like yeah, it's never. Seas. Yeah, it's never stopped. I am your right. captain. Right. So. That's never gonna go away. The ocean's too fucking big for that shit, man. So now we gotta do the DEFCON scale. So the standard DEFCON scale is five to one. Five being the lowest, one being the highest. Well, in the bad guy podcast, nobody's a good guy. So at five, you got Lee Murray, who's your coke dealing, kidnapping, bank robber. And at one, you got the purple gang, who has multiple massacres, multiple gang wars, and they're killing people on the streets. So on a scale of Lee Murray to the purple gang, where would you rate Rachel Wall? Uh, she's a five for me. She didn't seem to do too much. I mean, yeah, they, they had, there was 25 people that were claimed that they killed, but who's to say she's the one that you know killed any of them? Okay. So, and then she did. I mean, she did try to cut someone's tongue out or say she did, but you know, she. I mean, yeah, she went to jail a lot. Of, yeah. Where people go to jail. Yeah. You know, guys from Ecorse that go to jail. A lot. <laughs> I mean, <isn't> that special? <laughs> right. right. What do you think? I feel like you disagree. Man, you know me. I fucking try to get all fucking deep and analytical and shit, and not know what the fuck I'm talking about half the time. <laughs> but this is the way I look at it with Rachel. Um. You hate the player or you hate the game. So don't get me wrong. It was a, it was a short period of time in our eyes, but a year and a half, two years out at sea, that's a long fucking time. Right. So she was the main attraction. There's many ways of pirating back then. They either pioneered a bait and switch kind of, you know, technique where they're luring people in with their broke down ass boat, or they got it from somebody else. But either way, the number one factor is she was the main piece to attracting them in. So there's a thing. You stay on the shore and you be a servant or do you go with your silly fucking dumbass boyfriend <laughs> who, and go out to sea? She said, fuck it, I'm going out to sea. Then you let them let you be the chess piece uh, in their game, you know, their, their main attraction in their game. So counting that in, and I don't know her, nobody knows how many times she went to prison for what. None of that was for murders. She didn't cut nobody's tongue out, but just the bodies that went over chained in, especially knowing that they were fishermen, small boats, so they were easy prey. And when they would get a big prey, they'd fucking change their game up. So they were down and dirty. These were people who wanted, who didn't give a shit. They just wanted the cash, and they were willing to dump bodies overseas. She's got to get at least a four. If she cut her tongue out then i would say she was a three but i'm going with a four i get that because like we don't know that we can give her a murder but she was in on some murder rin so at some point mm -hmm. you know maybe if it's one or it's two you're like ah but at some point 24 yeah you're accomplishing and kind of some of that i don't know it's tough to say girls falling for douchebag dudes they like is really tough to deal with it happens all the time you just you just wanted to go look at the ocean. Next thing you know, you're pirating. And you're right there. And it's not like at that point, 1780s America or any fucking where in 1780s, as one woman on a ship, you could be like, you know what? I'm not the bait. You guys do whatever you want with me. And they'd be like, well, look, we're going to fucking do it or kill you. So yeah. which one do you want? So I guess I'm not factoring that isn't as much as where like, well, you know, she was part of it. And uh, after it was, you know. Don't get me wrong, there is that, the, the, the quote that I can take to the bank is the one where she said the day I went out to be a pirate was the, you know, when it went downhill. Mm -hmm. So there's regret there, but she didn't like say, I wish I wouldn't have murdered fucking 24 <laughs> people. I'm sure she did that for not self-incriminating herself. But anyways, like there is some remorse there, but I got it. Anyways, I'm, I'm, Hey, I'm another thing she did say, I forgot to put it in there, but I wrote it down. I just skipped it. Sometimes I skip stuff, but she wished she would have been a better Presbyterian. That was a preacher and shit. I could have just been cool, but I was like, man, fuck this farm. Yep. So run away. Next thing you know, they're about to hang you. Like, I'm the last I'm the last lady that got hung in Massachusetts. Fuck. I just want to look at the ocean. <laughs> we would never hang another woman. No, I won't try to do a Boston accent either. I don't think that was a Boston accent. I think that was JFK. Yeah, it, it was, was, JFK. I was. I was. It was either that or Quimbley from uh, fucking, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Simpsons. <laughs> Wait, that's not JFK. No, JFK is not from East Coast. Oh, oh yeah, fucking... yeah, he's from I'm sure Boston, right? Oh, okay. JFK is a Boston guy. All right. I'm just saying they got that weird JFK twang on top of an already you're, Boston accent. You're right there. To where it's like, well, you're speaking your own language. And just for a record, I fucking love Boston, man. Like I, I've been out there, but any Boston listeners, I love fucking Boston, man. That's a great city. 
bastard. Stayed in Jamaica Plain. <laughs> Love that area. All right, so I will go with the four, too, though. So we'll call that a DEFCON 4. They're moving in. I say we go to DEFCON 4. Well, before we go, you guys got anything? Uh, Good show. I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of tasty beers. Go get you a Centennial. IPA? <laughs> Centennial. IPA. How about yeah. you make that word work? <laughs> right. Cart horse. Yeah. And whatever the fuck that peach IPA was. Yeah. was all delicious. of them. Go get them. Go get them. It's been a while, man. And then drink them all at the same time with yeah. the chocolate martini. Yeah. Chocolate That's martinis. Right. It's been a while, man. And thanks for uh, having me back on. Work? Well, so this is Say Hello to the Bad Guy. Thanks for coming. And thanks for listening. Hello.